good evening everyone welcome to today's value talk and today we have with us uh, group captain ajay alawat and ajay is an nda alumni and he has been a fighter pilot in the air force and thereafter he i don't know what bug struck him and he decided to hang uniform he's uh, q5 trained from uk staff college in usa and he's currently a pilot in civil aviation qualified on airbus 320 boeing 737 presently flying gulf stream g200 business jet and also engaged as chief of flight safety in a non scheduled operator so i think they couldn't have been a better person to be a guest speaker on this particular topic which is uh, जिसके लिए मुझे बहुत से लोग जो हैं बहुत देर से अप्रोच कर रहे थे फॉर कंडक्टिंग अ टॉक ऑन एविएशन सेक्टर बोथ फॉर फ्लाइंग एज वेल एज इन द नॉन फ्लाइंग डोमेन वेलकम अजय वेलकम टू वैल्यूज टॉक आई सर थैंक यू हियर नाउ थैंक यू फॉर ब्रिंगिंग मी हेज थैंक यू अजय वी आर रियली ग्रेटफुल दैट यू गुड स्पेस ऑन टाइम आई नो यू हैव टू यू आर जस्ट बैक फ्रॉम फ्लाइंग आई सपोज and uh, still you could take out time and be with us today वी आर रियली ग्रेटफुल टू यू ऑल ऑफ अस इंक्लूडेड इंक्लूडिंग द ऑडियंस it's my pleasure sir. so ajay before we go to the formal session uh, let's hear when did you plan to leave when did you leave and why you left let's hear a little bit about yourself i am 89th course nda uh, commission uh, december 96 and uh, a force uh, uh, i was in fighters and i quit in 2017 okay i made the mistake of applying for release first and then thinking what will i do i will literally spend last 5 6 years advising my friends colleagues all those who are planning to leave is not to do that that is one big mistake i made and i have written an article on this which was published in force line the magazine that force net publishes that okay. like everything military two years make up your mind then take two years planning for it just don't jump in my case i jumped first and then look for a net <laughs> so this is one thing i like to tell my friends actually don't do that plan and then leave and i left and uh, i looked at some other things and then i decided let me go back to my core competency which is flying and i acquired my dgc license and started flying right so th- that's a very important lesson right in the beginning which we, which you have given and wo hum kafi hum is pe emphasis bhi dete hain ki don't just jump do plan your transition if you plan your transition then you are less likely to struggle outside it will be a, a smooth transition and that is the aim of this platform also that all the audience whosoever is wanting to make a transition or whosoever is wanting to make a career in whatever field just plan for it right so uh, you didn't plan your transition and so what was the struggle like i mean when you came out you just applied for pmr and then what happened i mean what are the kind of challenges you face mine was a slightly unique kind of situation my plan was to leave and go to us and spend some more time studying and i wanted to go into research and you know academic world okay and uh, then parents health became an issue my father was not keeping well and eventually he he left us so that changed the dynamics and again i say you know career is just one of the thing when you leave there are four or five big things which has you know parents health children education the place want you to live and your spouse's ambitions and aspirations so all those things come into play so my ducks were not really aligned and i couldn't follow my plan a so i switched to plan b which was aviation probably that's why we are speaking today uh, you were lucky that things did work out for you but you didn't anticipate it this way you didn't no sir that's this was my plan b Okay. I had started working on it to acquire a license for flying in civil, but that was not something I really wanted to do. This was more a fallback option. Right, right. So again, the so, lesson number two was I had a plan A and I also had a plan B. I had yeah. spent a lot of time working on plan A and it not the plan B. So my advice would be, before you leave, you know, kind of have things aligned. Yeah. So one important lesson is that if you are, especially for those who are. wanting to make a transition career transition one is that you plan second is then try to align the things according to plan a and for the worst case scenario you have your plan b also right so that's a good thing to do and that's how ajay is successful in life right you have been in the aviation sector now after air force you have been in the civil industry 
aviation industry. So, what are the trends you are noticing? What are the major trends? I mean, one is that you are flying, and flying is one thing, but there are a lot of things are changing in the entire world. So, what are those specific things which are changing, which you think are majorly changing in aviation industry? Per se? From a career or employment point of view, this market is very, very sensitive to cycles per se. So, for last about three years, there was hardly any hiring mostly firing side. So if you had left army or air force thinking of an aviation career for about last three years, you are probably still unemployed or you are employed at a wage that you don't really like, but now things are changing. So this is one thing very unique to this career field. Whereas if you are an engineer or let's say in security domain, there are always ups and downs, but not so much as this one. The amplitude is fairly high in this sector aviation sector. So this is one thing very unique about this. And the second part is when we leave services, we bring a you know skill set with us and most of us try and find something similar. So till now, most people looked at aviation as something that only pilots could look for. If you've flown in army or air force or navy, you thought only those people could find a career in aviation. So that's another thing, you know, we need to relook at. There are a lot of things in aviation that uh, Fauzis can do and do as well or maybe better than others. So maybe through the course of this evening, we will discuss some of those. Whatever you were saying, the same things are on the agenda. One is that people who are in flying, people who are already flying pilots, opportunities for them, opportunities for non-pilots and opportunities for wards of those people who are yet to make a career, yet to start their career, how they can become pilots or join the aviation industry uh, maybe in flying or non-flying branch so this is going to be the major topic of the day let's say first we'll go for the low hanging fruit that is flying opportunities for people who are already pilots and what is the process like and what are the chances of uh, getting a job if you're a fixing pilot which is mostly army and navy the chances of you finding a job is extremely high. In numbers, I'll put it more than 90%. The thing that you do kind of ensure is start getting into your DGCA license process well before you leave. Give yourself about a year and a half, at least, ideally two years. So get your uh, DGCA registration done, get your exams done, get your CPL, ATPL or CHPL equivalent licenses sorted. So you should have the license before you leave. The opportunities for helicopter pilots are not that many, but they are still enough. I would put it, if I have to give a number, about you know 70, 75%. The opportunities, because see, there are not too many helicopters in our country. Male, which is probably smaller in size than one sector of Greater Noida, has three times more helicopters than us. So the chances of a fixed wing pilot getting a job is very high. Helicopter pilot is high enough but not too high and uh, as i mentioned earlier very very dependent on on how the market is at that time what is the licensing process i mean can you just briefly cover the licensing process okay, may i request it let's put it towards the end because the process remains same for or for a kid finishing class 12th or a colonel sub retiring after serving 22 years and in my opinion they both are fit candidate especially if you had a good career you're not really looking to you know earn too much but pursue your dream 42 45 48 is not too late to start flying so maybe keep this, this is the last question right we'll discuss this in the end yeah what about the uh, opportunities in non-flying roles yes sir non-flying the thing that fauzis can get in is one is security security is a big thing in aviation from you know guarding the assets at the airfield to providing security it's specifically called airsec in short, which means aviation security to all other aviation assets and installations. I have not seen too many forges there, but all those who are there are doing fairly well. We don't seem to touch this subject because of lack of awareness. And like any other corporate job or civil job, this is a place where networking is very important. So the friends who are listening on to this program today, this is a time to reach out to people who are already engaged say security or administration of any aviation company this is the place this is the kind of job you will get only through networking and seldom through a merit-based interview so know people reach out connect and that's how you get into security and catering and training three things what about airport management okay so there are some mba courses on aviation management airport management they will get you a foot in the door but in this sector, 
the chances of you getting a job based on open merit based interview is very very low you will get into these fields through networking and networking alone right that also brings me to the importance of networking irrespective of whether it is a flying job or a non flying job if somebody is looking for a job in the aviation sector in person flying you could still get it because again that same demand supply role the way do we produce pilots in india one is through the civil flying schools where a kid with just about 200 hours applies for a job versus an army navy air force aviator who comes with a lot of experience all the military so we still get a leg up there and it's still a merit based kind of selection process but non flying roles including the engineers some of my friends have transitioned from being an engineer in army to engineer in the civil aviation and they're doing reasonably well but they could only get you know through networking is where they get the first break right and what about uh, when we say aviation sector can we include companies like boeing companies like airbus can we include these also in uh, when we talk of aviation sector or is it yeah. only the flying operators no these companies do pay well but the thing is in a year you know they had less than about 100 and out of those 100 this is one thing which is the likelihood is low maybe the vacancies are low maybe for the engineering side they may have a better opportunity in uh, these companies engineers fit do well to go through the same ame licensing process of dgca and if they do that one obviously the companies would gladly hire them because of their background and experiences and to occasionally there are vacancies in the dgca itself so they could apply and uh, become part of uh, the regulator getting okay. into boeing and or any of the aircraft manufacturers because primarily they don't make hair then it's there are not too many opportunities there right ajay you are with a private uh, operator right you are with a so i have served with two airlines before spicejet and indigo and okay. currently i am with a private operator it's a it's called nsop non scheduled operator and i'm flying a business jet and i have a kind of handle on how airlines work and all that so we 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 can pitch questions there if there are any okay what is better i mean uh, or should i say if somebody is uh, planning a career should one always go through the route of uh, airlines first and then maybe try non scheduled operators or if somebody is getting an opportunity straight up in non scheduled operator should what is better what is the pathway suggest recommended path Okay, sir. If I was to recommend, my suggestion would be always go through an airline first because in a smaller operator, NSOP, etc., you got to figure out your ropes yourself. There's hardly any teaching, and it go. It's more like they throw you at the deep end. So, if you're looking for a longer career here, I would suggest go through the airlines. Not so many options for the helicopter pilots, but definitely for the fixed wing, I would suggest you know go through the grind. Not a good life in airline, but do one contract three four years. and then you would be sorted for a nsop kind of life right? okay there are questions which are coming and i can see people are asking one is that what is the future of uh, this industry what are the opportunities of pilots in next 5 years in terms of growth of aircraft and airlines in india sir all these news that we have you know 500 orders by air india another 500 by indigo and couple more hundreds by airline the mobility as the general income level improve the middle class expands you will see mobility will move to air all most of the people who travel by ac1 ac2 and some by ac3 at least have an aspiration to travel by air so there is lot of latent demand and kapa report which came on 2021 said less than 3 and 1/2% of indians can ever travel that means less than 3 and 1/2 have been to aeroplane only once in their life so if that number goes to 7 10 12 most developed countries has this number tagged at 40 41 so there is a lot of scope for growth the europeans will uh, increase in numbers the pilot demand will increase in number so that's a given are there opportunities for you know training professionals in uh, aviation sector i mean those who may not be you know i'm not talking about flying instructors i'm talking about maybe behavioral instructors soft skill instructors trainers leadership trainers these kind of things uh, is the industry open to it so what happens is there are certain laid down courses like crm or behavioral studies basic security admin etc and all that the big employers are the airlines and they already have their captive staff to conduct this training the smaller operators normally they just do it on paper they really don't care whether it's done or not so not so much now the question which 
I want to ask is if somebody is a fresher and wants to become a pilot. So, how should one go about it, and what is the kind of whether it pertains to your uh, expertise? And if you have, you feel free to refuse to take this question, you know, you can. No, no. This is the so, question that I've been looking forward to, sir. Okay. I mean, the last so, couple of years, rising a lot of young kids who who seeking career civil aviation on Quora on internet okay. in person, and I do it pro bono, and I really enjoy doing it. Because then I will ask the question, and my question yeah. is: first of all, how to go about it, and secondly, because there are so many flying academies opening up, and most of the flying academies are outside. People pay through the nose, cost a fortune to become a pilot and undergo pilot training in the U.S. or anywhere else. So, what is the recommended route, and how should one go about it? How should one control the budget, and? Uh, what is your view on this? Let's break it. This is a big one, sir. I mean, let's break it. Let me first answer it. Who is an ideal candidate to start flying? Right. right. The retirement age in aviation is 65 years. Till 65, you can be actively flying in a cockpit. And after 65 years, if you're qualified on a time, you can be instructing in a simulator, which is also a reasonably well paying job for another about 10 years or so. So if you're going to be engaged in something for till about 75, let's say you start at 45, you still have 30 years to go. Wow. Let's you start at 50, you still have 25 years to go. So the ideal candidate in my uh, is somebody The way you are talking, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt, mm -hmm. lagta hai, I should also go and enroll. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to suggest, sir, that ideal candidate in my mind would be from 18 to about 55. Wow. So it, you know, younger you are is the first career and older you are, you are probably fulfilling an aspiration or a hobby or something. So, but the route remains same. Who should do it? I will say if one of some of our colleagues who are otherwise sorted, they are, you know, looking for a second career, not to make money, but to keep themselves gainfully employed, they should consider this option. Now, coming back, like if my son was to become a pilot, he's in class 12 now. He's eligible. The eligibility is very simple. Class 12, if you've done it with science and maths, basically physics and maths, you can start the process. My recommendation is do grad, at least grad. Because if you try after 12th, you will become. Most of most of your kids will become a pilot. And the mental faculties are not that developed. You know, my recommendation would be, even if you're choosing this as first career, the regs permit you to start after class 12th. My reg will be at least do grad. Get some more broader understanding of life in general. Get some kind of academic heft with you so that you can read a newspaper, argue on some subject, and you know, feel like reading some other thing other than English. The route is very simple. First is the QR. You should have done class 12 with physics and maths. Now, I reckon some of our colleagues here join NDA when NDA was uh, after class 11, or there are some who did not have maths and physics in class 12. The option is to do it now through open school, which is permitted. So you apply through open school, get your uh, class 12 physics and math sorted, and you are good to go for application per se. This is the route I would recommend. What are the hurdles? The first hurdle in an aviation career is medical. So get that out of the way first. Once you have your registration sorted out, first thing is go get medical done. So the medical is class two and class one. Class two is done by a lot of doctors who are in the list in the CV speed. Most of them are ex armed forces doctors, DCC and panel. They'll do a class two medical. If you fit the bill, then apply for class one, which is done at IAF boarding stations. So, because you don't want to figure out after spending 70, 80 lakhs that you don't, you're not medically. So, get the medical thing sorted out, get it out of the way. If you're medically fit, then the next thing you do is the exams, the ground subject exams. It's not the correct way in terms of you know military thinking that you should fly and learn, fly and learn. But the cheaper way is get your ground subject sorted out. You'll spend about 2, 2.5 lakh getting the classes, the tuitions and the uh, exams sorted out. And then spend big money, 50, 60 lakhs on the flying part. So medical first, ground subjects next, and then the flying. In this way, your the risk of spending and not gaining the benefit is lesser. Couple of questions I get from a lot of people is in terms of medical, uh, I wear glasses, am I okay? Of course you are okay. Without glasses, if you can, if you can, you have a vision of six by six, you are good to go. 
another thing i get asked is i'm little fat not physically active good to go definitely good to go as long as your you know medical is all right there is no issue with elevation next is height i am too short as long as you are about 152 153 good to go even if you are shorter then you are you'll be limited to certain aircraft type because you should be able to reach all fitters all pedals etc so these things are not an issue so i um, i think i've covered the big picture maybe now we can go into final details if you have some questions so but usse pehle aaj itne sare tumne ye jo doubts last mein clear kiye hai na ye to matlab everybody thinks ki if i'm wearing glasses or if i'm short i cannot join you know i cannot become this is the common perception people have so i will what i will do is that i will open the question answer session so that people can ask the questions but we are really grateful to you that you really could spare your time and before i open the question answer session gentlemen please join the value talks channel and value talk uh, google group now all the members have been given access to exclusive data database of uh, value talks which is a database of uh, jobs opportunities which is database of various other things de- de- uh, deputation psus corporate uh, hrs such a huge database which is available for you and take advantage of so do join the value talks google group before that you have to join value talks uh, group and there we keep sending the link for joining the value talks google group and please spread the word so that we can keep creating valuable content for you and we can keep getting good guests like ajay alawat got to focus on yourself on your faith on your dreams on your mind on your health yeah you got to work never tell keep your head